Seven years ago, I had an idea. And this idea was that I needed to connect people with the environment. And so this idea started off this journey of developing this organization called Young Marine Explorers. Two years ago, I started reflecting what we were doing with this organization and were we being effective? Were we accomplishing goals? Was it good enough that children and youth were exploring mangroves? Was this going to equate to environmental change? My answer was no, it wasn't good enough. So then I had to figure out, well, what do we need to do? And from there I realized that it wasn't just an environmental issue. There were greater problems. It was a huge holistic issue that we had to think about, that there was a relationship between education and poverty. There was a relationship between poverty and environmental degradation. There was a relationship between the environment and our economy. So then this, this then led me to rearrange things with the organization. And here I am now, two years after that, with an idea. With an idea of how we can use Young Marine Explorers as a model to further national development. So I'm going to invite you today on a journey to explore the ocean with me. But today, instead of exploring the ocean to learn about the biological aspects of the ocean, we're going to explore the ocean to understand what can we, as humans, learn about ourselves from the ocean. And so one thing that I think we often forget as humans is that we are part of this ecosystem. Right? We like to think that it's all about me. I am the sun. You know? And then sometimes it takes someone to tap you on the shoulder and be like, Nikita, you're not the sun. The world doesn't revolve around you. You know, and then sometimes we also forget that there's one ocean. You know, we're so good at separating things. We have the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, the, the Southern. And we sort of adopt this separate and apart idea. And I think this transfers also to how we operate as a country or as a nation, where we're really good at dividing things. You see this in academia, you see this in governments, you have the environment department, you have the health, you have the education, you have the finance, all filled with experts, all doing really great work, focusing to solve their one problem. All right, we don't often realize that, like the ocean, it really is one ocean. So if you're not really on board with me with this whole one ocean concept, I have two, two points to support this theory. The first, uh, water moves. And if you didn't know, water moves around the world. So the water that's out in the Atlantic today, you can say goodbye, bye water. It's moving at a rate of about three um, millimeters per second, sorry, three centimeters per second. And so it's gonna take a thousand years before that water that's out here travels around the global conveyor belt because there's a plan, there's a path, and it ends back in the Atlantic Ocean. So what we've learned, I think, from the ocean is that things follow a path, they need a plan, they take time. The second thing is, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about sea level rise. Sea level rise is a result of greenhouse gases, they form a blanket in the atmosphere. Blankets keep things warm. So when the sun rays come into Earth, they bounce off Earth, they're supposed to leave. But this blanket's like, no, but I'm gonna keep you so warm. So it keeps all these heat rays inside our atmosphere. So as the Earth warms up, the ice that's on land melts, ends up into the ocean. As the Earth warms up, just kind of like you, if it's a hot day, my personal bubble expands and I just get away from me. I'm hot. All right, water does the same thing. So the water drops expand. And so the sea level then rises. But, so the important point here is that when the sea level rises, it doesn't just impact the Atlantic Ocean, it impacts the world ocean. All right, so when we think about ourselves as humans, things that we can learn from the ocean, one is that things take time. We need to follow a clear path, like the water moving around the world, but we have to acknowledge that it's going to take time. The second thing is, is that everything is connected. It doesn't matter if you want to call it an environmental issue or an economic issue. Like the world ocean, 
it's one. And we have to approach it like that. So we're going to take a little look at a case study. Let's think of the world as the ocean. And let's think of the coral reef or coral reef as an ocean nation. All right, so coral reefs are complex ecosystems. Right? They have a lot going on in them. In an average coral reef in uh, the Caribbean Sea, you can have several thousands dif of different um, invertebrates and snails. <clears throat> you can have over 60 different species of coral. And you can have several hundreds of different types of fish. And so all these animals are working together and they're maintaining a healthy balance. And it's great. But coral reefs are delicate systems. And all it takes is one thing out of place and it collapses. So what we need to do is as we think about ourselves as uh, humans, let's also, let's also look at the, the idea of sort of coral reefs a bit further. So where you have sharks, you have groupers, you have parrotfish, you have algae, and you have coral reefs. They all work together. So you have the sharks eat the groupers, the groupers eat the parrotfish, the parrotfish eats the algae, and the algae controls the amount of growth of algae on the reefs, so the reef remains healthy. So if we switch things up, and let's remove the sharks, all of a sudden the groupers like, I'm top dog, you know, because they think that they run things. And so they don't have to worry about sharks trying to eat them, so they just go to, go, go to town. And they eat parrotfish. So then what happens to our parrotfish? Our parrotfish population decreases. And then what we see is our algae population explodes. But then the algae smothers the coral reef, and the reefs die. So what we've just seen is a shift from a healthy coral reef ecosystem to that of a reef system in crisis. And so there's a lot of similarities between a reef system in crisis and a nation in crisis. Because when you have a nation in crisis, you have things like crime skyrocketing. You have issues where you've got failing educational systems. You know, you have issues where people don't know how to address these social issues. You've got huge economic divides between the few who have a lot of money and the masses who have not. You know, and the challenge with a system in crisis is that if we can't find a solution for it, or if we don't know how to find a solution for it, we run the risk of losing the coral reefs or losing the nation. So when we, um, I think you can compare also, if we continue to compare our nation with uh, coral reefs. Coral reefs in the Caribbean have lost 80%. Um, We've lost 80% of our coral cover in the past 50 years. So it's real. Okay, so this is something that we have to find a way to, to combat. As we, um, as we carry on with this, I want to tell a story about, I've, for the past three years, I've been studying a coral called pillow coral. Okay, so I'm a bit silly, and I, I like corals. And so the coral that I study, I think it's fuzzy, and every time you know, the tentacles are always out, and I feel like every time I'm in the water, it's waving and saying, hi, Nikita, and I'm just like, oh, hi, I want to give you a hug. Obviously, the coral does not say that. This is why I create my imagination. But my approach to... Uh, <laughs> My approach to uh, coral conservation, I had to, even though that species was so unique, and is so unique, it's rare, it's only found in the Caribbean, there's actually no other um, animal on Earth that's like it, because it's the only species in this genus. So if we lose that coral, all that uh, genetic material is gone forever. So when I thought about how do we protect this coral, you know, I had to look at, okay, well, what were the threats? The threats that impacted this coral also impacted other coral species, like coastal development and pollution. In the same respect, it's also important to think about that the ocean is an open system. All right, so I had this idea. I was like, I'm going to go down with my dive gear, I'm going to take a fence and a hammer, and I'm going to put a fence around each of these coral colonies. And they'll be safe, right? I'm just like, hammer in that fence. It doesn't really work that way. Like, you can't put a fence around a coral and think it's going to be better. You can't take this isolated approach. You know, we have to learn from the ocean, and we have to take this holistic approach. The same thing applies when we're talking about the ocean, a coral reef ecosystem, or a nation. You can't look at things individually. So, young marine explorers 
has taken an ecosystem approach to national development. And we've looked at some of the challenges that exist and how do we combat that. Something that I think is really important to address is that when education is a priority for a nation, and this is, there's statistics that support this worldwide, when education is a priority, you see an increase in economic growth. You see a decrease in social issues like crime. You see an increase in environmental protection. All right, and so, and if you're looking at a crisis in nation, and how do you, you fix that, you have to say, okay, well, maybe we need to, even though I'm concerned about the environment, perhaps I need to put a greater focus on education. So this is what we've done with Young Marine Explorers. We've taken the ocean, and we've developed a curriculum that ignites passion in the students that we work with by using the ocean as a medium, not just to teach them about the environment, but to give them and equip them with the skills so that they can help to develop a nation. Because the reality is, if your students are leaving school and they have failed school, so they're, they're struggling at that, it's very difficult for them to get a job. So it's difficult for them to exist within society as itself. But then in addition, how do you ask them to contribute to being part of the solution? If they can't even figure it out because they can't even figure out the basics of maybe reading or writing. So what we've done with YME is we've developed a curriculum. And it's been mapped on top of the Ministry of Education's curriculum for high school in math language arts, <coughs> biology, and geography. So what this means is when the students are out exploring, we'll be in the mangroves, they'll be calculating a math equation, and they'll be plotting their location on a map using you know, lines of latitude and longitude. And then they will be writing all their re results in a report. Or maybe they'll be communicating that report through drama and art. And so we found a way to engage students and to equip them with the skills that they need so they can be part of developing a nation. What is interesting when we look at uh, national development is that sometimes we forget how important how important that is. Sorry. And um, and also we forget that when we're looking at conservation, or for me, you know, I definitely had an environmental approach. We like to think that it's it's really just about the environment. But what I've begun to learn is that when we live in an ocean nation, sometimes we are so disconnected from our ocean. So even though we depend so heavily on our ocean for jobs and for food, and even the transport of goods, the average person living in one of these nations barely even goes to the ocean, right? It's only those lucky who have 800,000 to 20 million dollars to buy a home gets to interact with the ocean every single day. All right, so what we're trying to do with Young Marine Explorers is break this mold where the ocean and the natural resources are only for those who have. It's about changing it where the natural resources are for everyone, but we have to, in the same way that we appreciate our natural resources, we have to work on having our natural resources help us develop. So with, um, with Young Marine Explorers, what we've done is we're working on how exactly do we build our, our nation. And we're taking this integrated approach where we also understand that we have to have these communication and discussions with your policymakers, the people in the environment, the people in health, the people in education, the people in finance. And we have to work together. And it has to happen on all different levels. So the students need to understand how integrated this system is. All right, and so if the students understand how integrated the system is as they move up and they become these policymakers or the voters, they're in a position to hold people accountable. But if we are divided and we don't understand and we don't think the environment is important and we just want to put an emphasis on developing the economy because we need money, we need jobs, then we forget that those jobs come from the environment. All right, but in the same respect, you can't just think about the environment without thinking about education or without thinking about the finance. So we have to come together and work collectively on this. And so what Young Marine Explorers is doing is we have a commitment. We have sort of inspired these students to want to be these developers, to want to change this country. And it's, 
It's not something that they just think about in high school, but it goes with them, it carries with them. And our Wyoming pledge ends with, as a Wyoming member, I will shape the future of the Bahamas. Because it's calling the students to the awareness that, as an individual in a nation, you have to be part of the change. As an individual in a nation, just like when we talked about the ocean in the beginning and we followed the path, it takes time for the water to travel all the way around the world. But we have to work together, change, creating change one wave at a time. So the idea that I really want to leave with you today is the importance of how the ocean can inspire a nation, especially an ocean nation. All right, and that we need to look more often at the lessons that we learn, that we can learn from the ocean and use those to help guide us in our development. You know, I believe that Young World Explorers is a model that can really develop these ocean nations. You know, so we can expand throughout the country, throughout the world, throughout the region, with the idea that the ocean has the ability to inspire a nation. 